Hey guys! Hey guys. Alright, sorry about that. It looks like um, the, the microphone is being a bit of a nonsense. Actually, I think it's more, more YouTube, but we'll yeah. blame it on the microphone because the gods at Google are not going to be happy if we, uh, if we blame it on anything else than that. Um, all right, so while we wait for you guys, um, we'll uh, tell you a little bit what we find that has happened. And obviously, as soon as you arrive, tell us if the microphone works or not. Otherwise, it just means we have uh, a bad internet connection and, uh, yeah, no chance. But can you hear us better now? Anyway, uh, so yeah, so the much better, much it's better. Good. good. Okay, cool. Yes. Thanks, guys. Thanks, uh, Red Fox. Thanks, thanks, Reggie. Thanks, Jeev and Deep. Okay, Jeev and Deep, we haven't forgotten about you. Sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> you will find out what the weather is like in September. We promise. <laughs> Has been the most dramatic lead up to a weather in September video ever. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Jim and Deep. The weather in September. So Jonas D on Facebook says, Hi, Robin and Laura. I am coming to New Zealand in September and I'm, I am watching hundreds of your videos to prepare. You guys are very helpful. Can you do a video about the New Zealand weather in September, please? Yes, we can. <laughs> All right, let's get started with a few tips about traveling in New Zealand in September, Laura. All right, so um, do you want to clean that? Yeah. Okay, so um, September is the first month of the spring season in New Zealand. So that means that it's still a little bit cold because winter's just ended, and ended, but usually you start to see the weather starting to warm up a little bit and you have some more sort of clearer days. It's not maybe raining as much. Um, and also it is a good time to travel around New Zealand because it's still pretty quiet in terms of how many tourists there are in New Zealand. And um, it also means that camper van and car rentals are a little bit cheaper than what you would expect in summer um and yeah it's it's it is a really good time to travel in new zealand so um what we'll do is go through the various um what the rainfall and the precipit uh, sorry the rainfall and the temperatures are around new zealand because it is different depending on which part of the country you're visiting um and yeah we'll go through that do you want me to no if you want to do a couple of tips and then um we can get started oh, okay so um yeah, uh, UV rays, pretty intense. Oh yeah, so in September, and um, because there are some more sunnier days happening, make sure that you do use sunscreen, um, especially if you're on the ski fields and stuff, because that's where the UV rays are a little bit more intense when you get to higher alpine regions. And um, although the skiing and stuff in September is really awesome, it, it's usually very, very sunny, and you do need to make sure that you protect yourself from the sun. And that's you. It's the same for when you're hiking as well. Um, yeah, we've gone through the shoulder season and... Um, Here you go. Let's go through yeah. the weather. Nice. All right. So uh, we're going to be talking about the temperatures and the rainfalls in New Zealand in September. And we're going to go through uh, all, all the different regions. So you kind of know where you're going to be going, what kind of weather you can expect. But keep in mind that in New Zealand weather in September is very changeable because we are changing kind of seasons right now. We are in the transition between, you know, really cold winter to, 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 sorry, to spring. So it's still kind of really kind of up in the air and quite unexpected as the weather. Also, New Zealand is an island, so expect that. <laughs> uh, all right, cool. So the typical temperatures in New Zealand in September. Let's start with the northern New Zealand, which is Northland, uh, Auckland, and Tauranga. That's on average 13 degrees Celsius, which is 56 degrees Fahrenheit. In central North Island, that's Hamilton, Topo, and Rotorua. That's about 10 degrees Celsius, which is about 50 degrees Fahrenheit. In the southwest North Island, so we're talking about New Plymouth, Palmerston North, and even Wellington all the way at the bottom, it's 11 degrees Celsius, which is about 52 degrees Fahrenheit. In eastern North Island, uh, so that is uh, Gisborne, Napier, and uh, I forget one. Um, the Wairapa. Uh, the Wairapa, yeah. Uh, it's 12 degrees Celsius, about 54 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, the northern New Zealand, the northern South Island, sorry about that, we're talking about Blenheim, Nelson, and even Picton, which is where you arrive with a ferry. Um, this is about 11 degrees Celsius and 52 degrees Fahrenheit. The western South Island, so we're talking about Westport, Hoktika, and Milford Sound, it is about 10 degrees Celsius, 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, the eastern South Island, that's Kaikoura, Christchurch, and Timaru, that is uh, 10 degrees Celsius, 50 degrees Fahrenheit. 
inland uh, South Island, so that's all the mountainous kind of areas like Alexandra um, and Queenstown and even uh, Lake Tekapo. That's 8 degrees Celsius and uh, 46 degrees Fahrenheit. And the southern New Zealand is 9 degrees Celsius and 48 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's for your temperature. That's what kind of temperature you can expect in New Zealand in September. But it does rain quite a lot in New Zealand. That's what makes our country so beautiful and green. So what kind of rainfall can you expect in those areas of New Zealand in September? All right, let's go back to the North Island. And uh, we're having Northland, which is uh, Northland, Auckland, and Taranga, with 130 millimeters of rain. Central Northland, and that's Hamilton, Topo, and Rotorua, with 90 millimeters of rain. New Plymouth, Palmerston North, and Wellington, that's 100 millimeters of rain. Gisborne, Napier, and the Wairapa is 60 millimeters of rain. Um, Blenheim and Nelson is 70 millimeters of rain on the South Island now. Um, then the west coast of the South Island. And again, this is one of the rainiest places in the country, but don't be afraid. It's still an amazing place to visit. Uh, 250 to 530 millimeters, depending on where you are at. Um, Kaikura, Christchurch, and Timaru, which is eastern South Island, is about 50 millimeters of rain, so quite dry. Lake Tekapo, Queenstown, and Alexandra is between 30 to 50 millimeters of rain, so the central North Island is the lowest amount of rain. And the southern South Island is 50 millimeters of rain as well. All right, now if we have to actually pick some of the best places in September to visit in New Zealand, we have the Tongariro National Park. What is there to do here? Some awesome whitewater rafting and what? Um, there is the Tongariro Crossing and um, yeah, September, I think it's October actually, officially opens. But uh, if you can still get some winter guides in September um, to do the crossing. But there's loads of different hikes you can do around the Tongariro Tongariro National Park. So yeah, basically hiking, whitewater rafting, and going to the chateau for high tea. Nice. <laughs> um, so if you spend some time in Wellington in September, you'll be lucky enough to actually uh, see the WOW, which is the World of Wearable Art uh, Festival. Wow. Wow. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> whoa. <laughs> whoa. What is that? Okay. Wow. Then. Uh, wow or whoa, whatever you prefer. Anyway, there is um, there is uh, basically a. Um, it's kind of. A, it's not a festival. It's kind of a. Yeah. It's a, it's festival. a fashion show. Yeah. It's a fashion thing, yeah. show. Style. Where it's like really artistic kind of uh, fashion, like you know, you have someone dressed like a monster, so like castles and everything. It's really cool. Anyway, yeah. it's happening there. Uh, in Hamilton, if you are studying there or just uh, driving by, there is the Tulip Festival in the Hamilton Garden. Um, in Queenstown, there is a lot of really amazing whitewater rafting because the snow is starting to melt. So the the, 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 the rapids are even rapider and uh, <laughs> the waters are even waterer. <laughs> it's, it's really epic. It's really awesome to, to go to Queenstown at this time of the year. And um, in Kaikura, the wildlife is especially active at the beginning of spring. You know, spring, wildlife, you know, there's a lot of things happening. So between the waves, the seals, the, mm -hmm. you know, everything is really a lot there. Now, still, if you're traveling in uh, September in New Zealand, you want to have some pretty good things packed. So uh, let's go uh, over quickly a quick packing must-have of September. All right. So like I mentioned, it is the first uh, month of spring. So it's still a little bit cold from winter. So you will need to have a few things packed like thermal layers, which are basically like your under layers like merino wool, for instance, which is really popular in New Zealand. And if you can't get that back home, you can definitely pick it up in a store in New Zealand. That's usually really good to have. Um, also some high factor sunscreen because uh, the sun starts to shine quite a lot during September and the UV rays in New Zealand in particular are pretty harsh because there is a hole in the ozone layer just above New Zealand. So it is a really good idea to have sunscreen even on a cloudy day, apply sunscreen as well. Uh, a rain jacket because really no matter what month of the year in New Zealand it is, there definitely can be rain. So it's always a good idea to have a rain jacket and on a similar note, some waterproof hiking boots um, because walking in wet shoes is never fun. Um, <laughs> also, make sure you have some swimwear because you have, uh, like Robin said, there's some awesome white water rafting to be done. So you'll need swimwear for underneath there. But if you're not really into being in cold water, then there's still plenty of hot pools <laughs> that you're probably wanting to try. And finally, make sure that you have some sunglasses, especially for driving um, and just, yeah, generally, generally protecting your eyes from the UV rays. 
All right, so Jonas, I hope that this answered your question about the weather in September. Uh, we also had uh, Jeff and Deep uh, on the live chat that was ask asking about the weather in September. So hopefully you guys got every single information you needed about that. But if you do want some more, we have a link for you guys in the description below with the weather in September and plenty more information. And if you do have some questions of your own, put them in the live chat if you're watching us live, put them in the comments if you're watching a rerun of this video. And obviously check out Backpacker.nz for heaps of tips yeah all right so moving on back to the live chat so there's been a lot of things happening so everybody told us that the microphone was back and working fine so cool awesome good good thing uh, happening here uh red fox says nz rule he's living here he's living probably in hogs bay which is awesome uh it's a great place to live in uh, yeah. so hogs bay if you guys don't know which kind of cities are there yeah so in hogs bay the main cities are napier and hastings and um it's known for its art deco it's wine. and it's wine yeah it's yes. wine so yeah so if you guys don't know uh hogs bay is pretty awesome we are in the north end as well we are in central north end actually uh, Michael Mariano says, are you guys going to be doing another gap year anytime soon? So we actually are doing quite a lot of travel for a slightly bit different project. And we will tell you more, uh, tell you guys more about that in the next couple of weeks, actually. Um, but yeah, we are doing quite a lot of uh, things. We're traveling to other uh, other little places. Mm -hmm. uh, we can we can start telling them right now. Can we yeah, not? Yeah, All right, guys. <laughs> so actually, we are starting to cover more of the South Pacific Islands. Uh, we're pretty excited about uh, everything that's those beautiful tropical islands have to offer. So if you guys check out uh, www.ns, uh, sorry, Fiji Pocket Guide. Dot com. So that's Fiji Pockets, like a gin pocket, and guide.com. Uh, we actually have started already uh, working on a Fiji travel guide, and we are going to be covering two other islands uh, within the next uh, couple of months. So we are going to be on the go quite a lot. Yeah. Um, to be fair, it's too cold in New Zealand right now. Do you know that? <laughs> <laughs> we are definitely ready to so go to some excuse. South Pacific Islands. So, yeah. So, um, Michael, you are from Hawaii. So, I don't think you are as intrigued by those places as some other people are. But uh, for us, which have been in New Zealand for quite a while, it is really much like, oh, wow. Yeah. And a lot of people that come in New Zealand to do a gap year on a working holiday visa, for example, they end up taking a couple of weeks to travel in Fiji or, or you know, in Tonga or, or any of those kind of small islands. And they have a lot to offer. And they also are burgeoning. Um, a tourism and um, tourism kind of countries so there is really a lot there um, there is really a lot there to explore and there is a lot to to do there so yeah um we do really love it we we really fell in love with it so yeah, yeah we're pretty excited about that but we're actually going to be uh, talking about that much more in depth we're planning on talking about it a little bit later but you know, you got me excited about it <laughs> so I wanted to say to say it to you guys all right um what else do we have uh even hova Hovath. Oh, I just destroyed your name, my friend. I'm sorry. Uh, he says, I'm traveling in October for 40 days. Wow, that's awesome. a long time. That's <laughs> so cool. Um, and I really have to thank you guys. You really made my make my life easier with all your info and tips you give. Cheers from Argentina. Oh, thank you. That oh, means yeah, a lot. Very welcome. Yeah, that's really <laughs> awesome. Thank you very much, Ivan. Um, you know, any questions that you have, if there is anything we're not answering, just uh, put it in the live chat or any comments, and uh, we're happy to do that. And uh, yeah, all, always cool to to get some feedback on the site. All right, so our friend from Korea actually gave us his name. So it's Minuk. Minuk? Minuk? Minuk. He says, I have a working holiday visa, so planning to land around April. Um, wow, that's a while ago. I, I like I like you planning ahead. So uh, what I'm wondering is that is there any many many welding metal fabric job? Uh, he's interested in Nelson, uh, New Plymouth, and Christchurch. Christchurch. So um, there is a lot of construction related jobs in New Zealand, a ton of them, especially around Christchurch. And we think Christchurch is one of the best places to do a working holiday visa because it gives you access to so many other places in the South Island. So if we were to give you a tip, go to Christchurch yeah. and definitely, I, I think you're going to find a job in a heartbeat um, in, in those kind of yeah. places. Yeah, and if if you mean by welding, you're also maybe doing panel beating, if that's doing oh, yeah. welding for cars and vehicles and things, then definitely there's a lot of demand for that sort of thing. Um, yeah, in Nelson and New Plymouth as well, we actually did use a, a panel beaters in New Plymouth. <laughs> so um, yeah, you can watch a video of us. Being, yeah, uh... we have we have needed this these services before, and you can certainly find like there's usually about five five different panel beaters in um in each large well medium sized city or town. So yeah, there's definitely some opportunity for that as well. Yeah. 
All right, and then we have Soul Emperor, which is asking a good question about uh, purchasing gears for high kings and everything. So I think we should uh, really answer that in wealth. Yeah. So uh, Soul Emperor on YouTube says, what store do you recommend for purchasing gears for hiking, coats, sweaters, etc.? We plan to purchase all of that in New Zealand. All right, so, well, New Zealand being such an outdoor kind of country, there is definitely a lot on offer for, um, for you know, outdoor kind of gears and store and, and all of that. And there is plenty on offer for all type of budget. You have a lot of, like, kind of high-end places where you're going to spend, like, you know, up to, like, sometimes $800 for a jacket, which I find absolutely crazy, to some stores where you're going to be able to find them much cheaper with some jackets around, like, $120, for instance. As per hiking boost, there is a lot of different choices as well. And, and what I can recommend is go from store to store and try as many hiking boots as you can, just so you find something that's actually going to be fitting uh, to you. Like, there is absolutely no shame to go from one store to the other until you find a boot that you're really happy with, because usually you kind of uh, really often, uh, you kind of really often wear hiking boots for your entire trip when in New Zealand. I mean, that's basically what we were living in. So you need to be able to find uh, to find uh, uh, the best hiking boots for you guys. Now, um, there are a lot of different stores, a lot of different kind of other uh, uh, options. So um, Laura, do you want to get started? Yeah, so um, I can give you some recommendations for buying new gear. Um, but just to make it clear that if you're coming from maybe a country like the US or even the UK or in Europe, usually buying outdoor gear is going to be a bit cheaper in those countries than it is in New Zealand. So um, just bear that in mind. If the, like, Although the, the equipment that you can buy in New Zealand is really, really good, it might be a little bit more expensive than what you're used to. Um, so I'll give you some um, names of some of the like really popular outdoor stores that you can find around New Zealand. So there's Kathmandu, there's Macpac, Macpac, sorry, Torpedo Seven, um, Bivouac Outdoors. Is that how you pronounce that? Bivouac. Yeah. Bivouac. Um, and Outside Sports and Mountain Warehouse. So they're sort of the main brands that you can find around New Zealand, where they do have stores in different cities around. And before you can go. In the button and give you a bit of, a, of, an, of an idea of general pricings for those ones. Um, so Mountain Warehouse and Torpedo 7 will be kind of like your two cheapest ones. Um, that doesn't say they are bad quality, actually. Torpedo 7 does carry first their own brands, which we use very regularly. And they also carry like a lot of major brands like Icebreaker, uh, you know, North Face and all those kind of things. So they have all those kind of things. Then you have um, Kathmandu and Magpac, which uh, mostly carry only their or actually only carry their own brand. And uh, they are kind of mid-range um, stuff. They are they are making their own, you know, every single one of the equipment and make them themselves. Uh, so it's more like you type. If you're in Europe, um, uh, there's more like the Decathlon type. They have their own brand. They do kind of, kind of a good job, but it's not the cheapest either. And then you have Bivouac that only carry the kind of like the really good brands and they're usually kind of a bit more expensive. So that would be how you kind of rank them into like where they are on the market. Yeah. Okay, so if you're looking for something a bit cheaper, if you are in a budget and you need some more basic stuff, then there are some department stores in New Zealand called The Warehouse and Kmart. And they also have an outdoorsy section in those stores as well. They do some camping gear as well, but it's usually obviously um, a bit cheaper. So perhaps the quality isn't absolutely top notch. So do bear that in mind. There's also opportunity to buy secondhand um, hiking and camping gear in New Zealand as well. Um, one way to do that is to go onto uh, Facebook groups. Now, there are uh, local Facebook groups for each sort of town around New Zealand where people um, buy and sell some products. And usually because, you know, New Zealand is quite an outdoorsy country, there's usually some outdoors gears that you can be getting on there as well. And um, there's also a backpacking Facebook group, which we will we can link to in the description below. We um, know of two really good ones, which you can um, get some gear off as well. Um, and also there's a lot of op shops, which is basically opportun opportunity stores or secondhand stores in New Zealand where you can get some cheaper outdoorsy clothes from there as well. And army surplus stores is usually a good thing as well, but they're a little bit less, um, there's a little less abundant around New Zealand, usually in the, in the much larger cities like Auckland or Christchurch. 
I'm, yeah. I'm just going to butt in on this one as well. I'm just going to um, uh, give a tip about uh, hunting uh, stores. Uh, there is a really famous brand in New Zealand called Hunting and Fishing, which Kiwi live with. I mean, you've seen like a lot of our videos with locals, you know, for example, when we did the Forgotten World Highway, every single one of the kids were wearing clothes from this brand called uh, Hunting and Fishing. They are usually a bit more camo style, but they are really warm. They're made for the New Zealand outdoors. So it's also a really good option if you're looking for something uh, that's going to last for quite a while because they usually be, they're more expensive, uh, but they usually last you a lifetime. I mean, we, 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 we have some friends here that, you know, they're born in those things and they're still wearing them. <laughs> yeah. They're still wearing them. Yeah. Um, also, there is the opportunity for areas where there's the great walks or the most popular hikes in New Zealand, like the Tongariro Crossing. There's opportunity to actually hire hiking gear for those walks. So, um, for instance, um, near the Tongariro Crossing, there are a few hostels and, and stores which will hire out hiking boots or jackets for the day, for instance, or in Queenstown, because there's um, there's three different great walks which you can do in the Fiordle National Park and usually people base themselves in Queenstown before doing those hikes. You can also get yourself some camping gear to hire or hiking boots or even backpacks as well. So that's another option as well. But that is only in very you know selected places where there are a lot of um, really popular walks around. Um, and another thing to really note is if you're bringing your own hiking gear or your own camping gear from home, make sure that you fully clean it before getting, well, basically packing it and going onto the plane. And that's because in New Zealand, there are strict biosecurity rules. When you arrive in New Zealand, you're not allowed to bring any dirt or soil into the country. So that also includes any soil that might be on your hiking boots, for instance. If you do have anything like that in your luggage, whether it's a tent or even hiking shoes, you have to declare it and make sure that it's clean. Otherwise, if it's not clean, then they're probably going to make you clean at the airport. So bear that in mind as well. Yeah. All right. And uh, obviously, if you do want some more like camping gears and everything like that, those stores also uh, carry like camping gears and all, all, all those kind of items. But they're a bit more, um, they're a bit more like you know bigger kind of items. And I don't think that's uh, this is what you were asking about, Sol Emperor. Now, if you guys want to dive more, uh, more, more in depth into um, this kind of subject, we do have some articles on Backpacker Guide on NZ about this subject, and we put the link in the description below. So if you just scroll down a little bit, open the description, and you will find, uh, you will find all articles on there which details every stores and all those kind of things so it should be uh it should be super helpful to you guys and if you do actually find this video helpful make sure to like and subscribe it really helps us out a lot all right let's go back to the live chat uh so ba ba Nunjia route i'm sorry about uh butchering your name my friend uh, i say i'm staying in oakland under a work visa trying to bring my partner can you guide me so we are a travel channel here. So we're here to answer like kind of tourist and traveling questions. So anything to do with immigration, we can't give you any answer because we just don't know about it and we're not licensed immigration advisor. So the only thing I can tell you is to uh, contact Immigration New Zealand and ask them the question um, directly. Uh, Red Fox says, uh, remember when you went to Cape Kidnappers, the camp with the wall uh, with the yellow rock was my Nas and Papa's uh, camp uh, where they worked. Oh, that's pretty awesome. Cool. Honestly, that's an amazing place to live in, man. Like yeah. just right in front there. If you guys want to watch uh, this video, uh, just type, type Cape Kidnappers on uh, the search bar on our channel and you'll be able to watch this video yourself. Uh, it was really cool. We saw a lot of birds and everything. And sadly, you can't go there at the moment because of a landslide. Yeah. Landslip. So, um, well, watch the video so you see what you missed on. <laughs> that's, a, that's a bit bad. But, yeah. <laughs> um, now, um, Minku says, Hi, ah, thanks, Fela. I'm also doing a PR visa, so I need a permanent job. Uh, how about so the New Plymouth? Uh, it still crashes be be best. Um, well, we don't know about visa. You know, we can't advise you about visas and everything. But if you tell us you're doing welding, we think Crash is the best place for you to go to. And so since we think it's the best place, you're going to have employees which are more eager to get you. So I think you're going to be... You're going to be best going there. But it's really up to you. Just give it, give it a shot. Visit. Like, I mean, my tip is to actually go and visit those three places and see which one takes your fancy. You know, yeah. if you arrive in New Zealand to do a PR visa, that means you want to stay here forever, right? You may not want to settle in the first place you land in. You may want to travel in. So yeah, land exactly. somewhere in New Zealand, travel everywhere in the country. And when you find a place that you really love, then try to work there and try to actually start your life here. Don't just go on to the first place because two people on YouTube told you to. I mean, you're about to make a life-changing decision. Um, try them yourself. Uh, Halil say he's from Turkey. Hi. 
What are you doing, Halil? How is it? How warm is it in Turkey? Because it's really cold here in New Zealand. Uh, oh, uh, Red Fox was actually trying uh, talking about uh, hunting and fishing stuff. Yeah, so yeah. even the locals. <laughs> yeah, here you go. Uh, he says hunting and fishing. His brother-in-law works and owns it. Well, you, you know what? He's doing advertisement. Hey, you can't do advertisement. Here. <laughs> yeah. What are you doing? Uh, Son Emperor says, "Great, thank you so much. I'll check those uh, stores out." And Yuya says, "Thank you. Well, you're very welcome." All right, so thank you very much for joining us for this live chat, guys. I'm really sorry about what happened with the microphone, uh, but we really appreciate the fact that you guys took the time to tell us. It's so important for us that you guys tell us if the video is not good, if the um, if the microphone is not good, just so we can uh, you know change that straight away. And so everybody is actually enjoying the videos, especially when we put the repost as well. Um, so thank you so much for joining us for another live session. Um, and uh, obviously, Join us next week at exactly the same time. And uh, at your time back home, that will be. If you are in the US, it's Saturday, 4 p.m. EST, 12 p.m. PST. If you are in the UK, it's 9 p.m. on a Saturday. If you're in France, it's a van de on, on the Saturday. And in India, it is 1.30 a.m. on a Sunday. Thank you so much. Um, and uh, before we leave, uh, says thanks for giving me the answer. I reckon that's what I have to do. Yes, definitely travel around, enjoy New Zealand a little bit. You're about to change your life, so do that. Yeah. Thank you very much. Bye bye. See you next week. See you later. Bye bye.